Germany's vice chancellor and minister for the economy, Robert Habeck, has delivered a stark warning for the future of Europe. In an Easter address, he said Germany and the EU must be prepared to defend themselves against military attacks in light of the war in Ukraine. We long for peace, yes, but the honest, bitter answer is that there will probably not be a quick, good end, even if we wish otherwise. We have to adapt to the threat situation. Anything else would be naive. Therefore, we would be well advised to invest more in our own security. We, Germany, the European Union, must protect ourselves all around, including from military attacks. Fabrice Portier is CEO of the political consultancy Rasmussen Global. He was a NATO director of policy planning. Good to have you with us. Fabrice, do you agree, first of all, with Harbeck that there'll be no quick and peaceful end to the war in Ukraine? Well, I think uh, I tend to agree, but it, the longer I think we make up our minds on delivering certain types of long range weapons, or delivering the kind of quantity of artillery shells that the Ukrainians need to defend and, and hopefully push back against Russian forces, the longer it takes us uh, to make those decisions, the longer uh, and, and you, in a way, the more elusive the peace will be. Well, Habeck said Europe must adapt to threats. Uh, is the EU doing that effectively or is all of this way too slow for you? Well, I think we are clearly seeing uh, a strategic awakening uh, across Europe and across the West that uh, now we are no longer living in a peace uh, time, but we are living in some kind of pre-war time where we need to prepare for the worst. Uh, however, I think the dilemma we face is, is very simple and I'm not sure it has yet uh, properly sunk in. Either we are going to contain Russia at the border, at the Ukrainian-Polish border, or we are going to contain Russia at the Russian-Ukrainian border. And I think what we do to help Ukraine uh, uh, get back its occupied territories and win this war will decide on the form of containment and the resource intensiveness of this containment for the coming decade. Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk says war is no longer a concept from the past. It is real and it started over two years ago. The most worrying thing at the moment is that literally any scenario is possible. He says we haven't seen a situation like this since 1945. What are Europe's leaders trying to achieve with such warnings? Well, I think they're also trying to mobilize uh, each other uh, and because I, I don't think there's yet a full consensus among the European Council, uh, uh, between the European Council leaders that we need to prepare for war and we need to prepare our industry and our citizens. Uh, and then, of course, there is also a message sent to European voters and citizens that uh, we need to uh, face the cost that war will a war preparation will require and that the best way to prevent war is if we have a very solid defense like what the the polish uh, government is doing by spending up to four four percent of its gdp in defense how would you say the war in ukraine has changed the eu's approach to joint defense i think the war in ukraine has been a revolution uh, as far as the european union is concerned where before it was a kind of second tier actor on European defense question. Uh, and now both in terms of financing, but also increasingly in the coming years in terms of uh, supporting uh, defense cooperation, multinational projects, developing uh, defense industrial capabilities and capacity to produce more across Europe. Here, European Union is actually stepping in with both its potential fiscal muscle that uh, now member states are, are lacking, but also its capacity to bring together all the different players. And I think the coming years, the next European Commission will be critical in getting this right, because we have seen many promises of strong and great European defense in the past uh, often fe fell flat. But now there is a real test upon us, which is, are we going to be able, us Europeans, to contain the Russian threat on the long term? And Russian President Vladimir Putin says he won't attack a NATO country, but the bases in countries like Poland that host Ukrainian fighter jets would become legitimate targets. Would that trigger a wider conflict? 
Well, I think that's the game Putin likes to play with our minds, which is on one hand, he pretends he's a, a, a man of peace, he's just defending some of his core interests. And on the other hand, he's obviously threatening and, uh, and to, to hit some of our uh, uh, capabilities. He, we are seeing Russian missiles crossing NATO airspace. So, so I think he's playing that game in, in a way deterring us from uh, going to uh, the next, uh, in a way, the next pushing the envelope in providing the next kind of weapon systems to the Ukrainians. So I think it's more him trying to deter us for doing more in Ukraine than him really directly threatening the NATO territory. Security analyst Fabrice Portier, thank you very much for being on DW News. Pleasure.